The peripheral nervous system of the human body is broken down into two. We have our somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Previously, we discussed our somatic system and we said that the somatic nervous system consists of two divisions. We have the sensory division and the motor division. And in the same exact way, the autonomic nervous system also consists of the sensory division and the motor division. But in the case of the autonomic nervous system, the motor division is even further subdivided into two. We have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems. Now, before we actually discuss these two individual systems, let's discuss what the difference is between our somatic and, and autonomic nervous system. Now, the somatic nervous system basically innervates skeletal muscle, skeletal tissue, and that means our somatic nervous system is responsible for our voluntary movement. So what allows me to move my arm back and forth is the fact that inside my arm I have skeletal tissue that is innervated by our somatic nervous system, our skeletal muscle. And that's exactly what allows me to move my hand back and forth. Now, what about the autonomic nervous system? Well, the autonomic nervous system innervates cardiac muscle and smooth muscle, and it also innervates different types of glands found inside our body. So that means the autonomic nervous system controls the rate, the beating of the heart, and it also controls, for example, the dilation and constriction of our blood vessels. So it's the autonomic nervous system that controls all our involuntary movement, movement that we cannot actually control. Now, the somatic nervous system consists of our electrical pathways that only have one neuron. But in the case of the autonomic, we usually have two neurons in our electrical pathway. We have a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. Now, in the case of the somatic system, we only use the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. In the autonomic case, we use acetylcholine as well as, in some cases, epinephrine and norepinephrine. So, now let's discuss the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions of the autonomic nervous system. Now, let's begin with our sympathetic case. Let's suppose we're casually walking in the park and all of a sudden we have a dog that begins to chase us. Now, if we choose to run away from that dog or if we choose to fight that dog off, in either case, it's the sympathetic nervous system that actually kicks in. So let's suppose we decide to run away. Now, as we begin to run, what begins to happen is more blood begins to pump to our skeletal muscles so that we can run away. And as more blood is being pumped to our muscle, those muscles are basically using more energy, creating more ATP molecules, and they need more oxygen. And so the rate of our respiration increases as well as the rate of our heart. Now, as we begin to run, we have to see where we're going. And so that means our pupils increase, they dilate so that more light gets into our eye and we can better see where we're actually running to. So we see that our sympathetic nervous system, this is the division of the autonomic nervous system that is responsible for the fight or flight response. This includes dilating our pupils, increasing the heart as well as our breathing rate and increasing the amount that we sweat. So that's because when we sweat, we're basically expelling the byproduct, our energy. So as we produce more ATP in our muscles, that creates more energy, more thermal energy as a byproduct. And to keep our temperature of the body at the same temperature, we have to expel that energy. And we do that by the process of sweating. 
Now, when we're running, we don't have to worry about digestion. We don't want to have to worry about digestion because our body basically needs to use the majority of the energy to uh, basically run instead of digest. And so what happens is that decreases our digestive rate. And at the same time, it inhibits peristalsis because peristalsis is the movement of our food products through our small intestine for the process of absorption. So when we essentially begin to run, we don't want to worry about digestion or peristalsis. So the sympathetic nervous system shuts down these processes. It decreases their rate. So the overall effect of our sympathetic nervous system is to basically increase the blood flow to our heart, to our cardiac muscle, as well as to our skeletal muscle. So the blood vessels that carry the blood to our cardiac and skeletal muscle increase in size, they dilate. But the blood vessels that carry the blood to our digestive tract basically decrease in size, they constrict because our rate of activity decreases inside the gastrointestinal system. So now that we know what the job and function of the sympathetic nervous system is, let's actually discuss the pathway of the electrical signal along the neurons inside the sympathetic nervous system. So we have two neurons in our pathway. The first neuron is known as our preganglionic neuron and the second neuron is known as the postganglionic neuron. Now, all preganglionic neurons in the sympathetic nervous system begin in the spinal cord of our body. So, the cell body and the dendrites of the preganglionic neuron are found in our spinal cord. When they actually exit, when the axon exits our spinal cord, it always exits from the front side known as our ventral side. And the axon of the preganglionic neuron is relatively short compared to our axon of the postganglionic neuron. Now, at the first synapse between our preganglionic and the postganglionic cell of the sympathetic nervous system, we use acetylcholine as, as our neurotransmitter to pass that signal from our pre to our postganglionic cell. Now, when the action potential is carried all the way to the axon terminal of the postganglionic cell, at the synapse between our axon terminal of the postganglionic cell and the cell of our effector organ, in this case, we use a different neurotransmitter. We either use epinephrine or we use norepinephrine. So once, the, uh, once again, in the case of the sympathetic nervous system, every single preganglionic cell begins in our spinal cord. And we'll see this is not the case in the parasympathetic system. Now, there is an exception to this rule. So inside the sympathetic nervous system, we usually have two of these neurons. We have a pre and a post ganglionic neuron, but there is one exception. The electrical signal that is carried from the spinal cord to our adrenal medulla is carried by only a single neuron, by one preganglionic neuron. So the preganglionic neuron basically carries that electric signal all the way to our adrenal medulla without using the postganglionic neuron. And our neurotransmitter in that case is still acetylcholine. So now let's move on to our parasympathetic nervous system. So in many different ways, the parasympathetic nervous system basically reverses these effects. So let's suppose we just ate and we basically ate, we sit down and we begin watching TV. So what begins to take place? So as we're watching our television, we're not basically using our muscles as much. So that means we do not have to worry about producing ATP to move our muscles, to contract our muscles. So what the parasympathetic system does is it basically decreases the rate of the heart and it decreases our respiration rate, basically the opposite of what the sympathetic nervous system did. Because we're not sweating as much, we 
don't have to worry about sweating as in this case. So our sweating basically drops. At the same time, because we just ate, we have to digest our food and we have to absorb our food, the nutrients inside the small intestine. So what happens is the digestion rate basically increases. Our excretory system is working much more than before and we're no longer inhibiting, we're inducing our peristalsis so that we can actually move that food along our small intestine. So the parasympathetic division of our autonomic nervous system is responsible for the rest and digest activities. This means it increases the flow of blood to our digestive organs and excretory system. So that means the blood vessels carrying blood to our digestive organs increases in size, they dilate, while our blood vessels that carry our blood to our skeletal tissue decrease decreases in size and so we have a decrease in blood flow because we don't have to worry about moving our arms or legs. We're not actually running, we're sitting down and we're watching television. So this is what the parasympathetic nervous system does. Now. In, in, in the same exact way that we discussed our pathway of the electrical signal, let's discuss the pathway in the parasympathetic case. So in the case of the sympathetic nervous system, our preganglionic neuron always begins in our spinal cord, but in this case, it can begin in a spinal cord or it also can begin in the brain. So the cell body begins in our brain or spinal cord and now the axon is relatively long. So the axon is long compared to the axon of the postganglionic cell. So we still have our uh, preganglionic cell that synapses with the postganglionic cell and in this case our, our neurotransmitter is also acetylcholine. Now we have a short postganglionic axon. In this case, we had a long one. And now our synapse between the postganglionic neuron and the effector organ uses acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter. In this case, we use epinephrine or uh, norepinephrine. So this is a second difference between our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So the preganglionic neuron begins either in the spinal cord or in the brain and then carries our electrical signal via a long axon to our synapse that uses acetylcholine. And then the signal is passed down to this one and at this location it uses our acetylcholine once again. So the major difference between our sympathetic and the parasympathetic is in the parasympathetic both synapses use acetylcholine in this case only the pre uses our acetylcholine the post uses epinephrine. In this case we have a long preganglionic and a short postganglionic here we have a short preganglionic and a long preganglionic. In the sympathetic case, it always begins in a spinal cord, while in this case, it begins either in the brain or in our spinal cord. Now, in the parasympathetic case, we always have a preganglionic and a postganglionic neuron. In the case of the sympathetic, we usually have a pre and a postganglionic, but in the case of the signal being transferred into our adrenal medulla, we only have a single neuron in the pathway. We have the preganglionic neuron. And once again, our sympathetic nervous system is responsible for monitoring and regulating the activities related with the fight or flight responses. But in the parasympathetic case, we basically uh, regulate the rest and digest activities. And the major difference between our somatic and the autonomic is that somatic controls our skeletal movement, so voluntary movement, but the autonomic controls all the movement that is involuntary, such as increasing our heart rate, dilating or constricting our pupils or blood vessels, controlling our rate of digestion, and so forth.